Nobody really likes riding in the winter, but here in the UK, unless you can spend your whole time on a smart trainer, then learning to face the wind, the rain, the snow, the frost, the cold, it's just something you have to deal with. But there are a few things you can do to make sure you're as best prepared as possible. Wearing good clothing is a start, but also making sure your bike is really prepared for the winter is a really good idea. And before we head into the winter, now is a good time to make the changes to your bike. So in this video, I'm going to run you through five key things you can do to winterize your bike. first thing to talk about are mud guards. Now they might not look good or stylish but they are really sensible. They keep a lot of the spray from the front and rear wheel off you and just stop you getting as soaked as you would without mud guards. Now on this bike I've got proper dedicated mud guard mounts on the fork and the frame and I've got these nice SKS mud guards which provide full length coverage with little flaps at the bottom. If your bike doesn't have mounts for mud guards like these there are other options. One option is a really simple one and this one just attaches to the seat post and that keeps your bum and uh, legs from getting as wet as it might without it. Another option, and there are other options on the market, these are the uh, race blades. You get a front and rear one and they use simple Velcro uh, sticky plasters to attach to the frame and they will fit most uh, race frames as well. So there are mud guards to suit most bikes. So have a look on our bias guide in the link in the description below to all the mud guards available to you. So I really recommend my guards. They're just a really sensible option for winter riding. The other thing you're gonna need are some good lights. Even in the daytime, like now I'm filming and it's really cloudy and quite dimpsy. So some good lights are a sensible option. And the lights you choose depend on the sort of riding you're doing. So small blinker lights are good for urban city riding. But if you live in the countryside where it's really dark, there's no street lighting, you need some really powerful lights just to make sure you can see where you're going as well as being seen by other road users. I've got some uh, small lights here, a rear Bontrager light and an exposure light on the front. I'll put a link to a bias guide for all the light options on the market in the description below so you can find a light to suit your budget and your requirements. But you really want to look at having lights on your bike all the time during the winter, in my opinion, because it's not just nighttime riding where you need lights. Even during the daytime, it doesn't always get that light. And today, for example, it's quite overcast and cloudy. So having some small lights just to increase your visibility to other users is a sensible option. So some good lights are worth investing. And it's worth investing quite a bit in lights because the better lights uh, provide better durability, uh, battery life, uh, more usability as well in terms of charging them up and different modes. So don't skimp on lights, get the best you can afford. Number three is good quality tools, spare tubes and a high quality pump. The last thing you want to do, and this comes from personal experience, is to punch you in the middle of nowhere, miles from home, and it's pouring with rain, it's really cold, you can't feel your fingers and you're trying to change a tube with a rubbish tire levers or a rubbish pump and or you don't have the right tools, you break a chain, you don't have a chain tool with you, you're stuck, you've got to phone a taxi, phone your mum, your girlfriend, get you home. So make sure, as in my case, use a high quality saddlebag and just pack it with all the tools you need. So in there I've got two spare tubes, got a chain tool, got some patches and some other bits and pieces. Uh, a special link for a chain in case I break that and I've got a decent pump. Now it's just a small pump, but it's a good quality pump. You could look at getting a frame uh, pump if you want um, easier inflation, but make sure you've got a well-equipped saddle pack with all the tools you need to cover most eventualities so you can get home if you do have a mechanical. The next thing to look at are the tires on your bike. Now winter riding places a lot more demands on a tire in terms of just much more grit and debris on the road from all the rain. So you want a really hard wearing, a durable and a puncture proof tire. In my experience, I would go for a tubeless tire if your bike will take it because a tubeless, though it can be a faff to get set up in the first place and there are issues with different rim and tire compatibility issues, tubeless just minimizes that risk of puncturing and I'm all about minimizing anything going wrong in terms of mechanicals or flat when I'm riding in the rain and the cold because less time spent on the side of the road is a bonus in my book. So tubeless is good if you're interested in going down that route. If you're not, there are plenty of good options for uh, clincher tyres. These Bontrager tyres have a really 
a hard wearing, a thick, robust casing with a puncture protection belt in there. I'd also recommend going for as wide as your frame will take as well. As for the lights, I wouldn't skimp on a good set of winter tyres. You're going to punch your tyres through some of the hardest riding conditions known to us, so really invest in the best tyres you can. You're going to put a lot of miles into them, you don't want them to wear out quickly, you want the best puncture protection possible, so get the best tyres you can. And once again, I'll put a link to a good bias guide to our tyres in the description below this video, so you can check this out if you want some more information on what tyres you should spend your money on. The other thing to talk about with tyres as well is to get the widest tyres your frame will fit. A wide tyre gives you a bit more volume, you can run the tyre pressure a little bit lower, it gives you a bit more comfort, a bit more traction as well. So wide tyres are a good thing, especially in the winter, you're doing long rides, you want a bit of extra comfort, so wide tyre will deliver that extra comfort. And in at number five on my list of how to prepare your bike for the winter is to keep it clean and well serviced. Now is a good time of year to get your bike serviced. Maybe treat it to a new chain and cassette if you had a long summer of riding, and maybe some new cables and uh, cable housing just to make sure your bike's shifting nice and smoothly. Brake pads are also worth paying attention to, especially disc brakes are a little bit harder to inspect. Uh, rim brakes, check you've got plenty of life in those pads. If you need to replace them, now is a good time to replace them. And if you're using disc or rim brakes, there are pads that provide longer, uh, durability and better performance in wet weather and we'll put a link to some of those options in the description below. So during the winter you want to make sure your bike is working smoothly so you want to clean it straight after a ride, give the drivetrain particularly a lot of attention, make sure the chain and cassette are clear of um, mud and other kind of road grime. As we head into the winter and the roads getting salted and gritted you want to make sure you clean all that salt off the bike because that can be corrosive to the expensive uh, metal parts on the bike. So you want to use a high quality cleaner, uh, just get the whole bike and drivetrain particularly uh, really clean. And I'll do that after a ride, hose it down, make sure it's ready uh, for the next ride. And once you give your bike a good clean, make sure you treat the chain with some lube, use a high quality lube. A wet lube is good in the winter, it's going to last a bit longer, uh, it's not going to wear out as quickly as a dry lube when it's raining and the road's covered in water. In having a good cleaning and lubing routine, we'll make sure your bike is ready for the next ride. So when you jump on it, it can be working nice and smoothly, the chain is going to be quiet, the shifting is going to be good, the brakes are going to work. So it's not going to let you down, you're not going to get frustrated if your bike is not in tip-top condition. So you spend a bit of time after a ride, make sure it's ready for the next ride, and then you go and treat yourself to some cake and coffee when you've, uh, when you've done. So those are my five key bits of advice for preparing your bike for the winter and making sure it's going to work reliably and smoothly through the hardest months of cycling we have to look forward to. I'll put some more reading material in the description below and if you've got your own advice and recommendations do put them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you prepare your bike for the winter. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and I'll see you again next time.